nature. Hey, buddy. What's good? Oh, he carried it away. What a savage. He can carry it. Well, I realized I haven't even started an intro yet. I already uh, left a lake. So, uh, yeah, we are... I guess I could clickbait this title and said we're learning how to catch bullheads in the winter. Kind of the case. It's a gorgeous Texas day. Winter Texas day. It is 75 degrees and barely, barely breezy. By barely, I mean like 15 miles an hour. Nothing here. Let's see this spot. This spot is usually pretty productive in the winter time. It wasn't a spring, so... Um, yeah, let's just get going and, I don't know, we'll go, we'll wing it, freak it. Well, we're back. That's all I gotta say. I'm not hyping anything up. Be super, super, superstitious today. But, something could change. That's all I gotta say. Oh, yeah. Good day. Good day. Yes. Yes. On oh, the secret bay. Oh, it's a what? No way. I would catch a bullhead in a trout lake. Look at that. That's a bullhead. In February now. At a pretty popular trout lake. Jeez. See ya. Become a trout someday. Come on now. Yeah, check out this bank, guys. It's it's pretty deep down here, but it's an overflow. There's a lake on the other side. A um, couple, few, several years ago, actually, this lake over over flood, over you know, overdosed. <laughs> What's the word? It got too high, and it over. I can't. I have no idea what my English is right now. It went over the hill, and it got too full, and it overflowed into here. I'm about to eat. Yeah, this is an overflow of the lake I fish all the time in the summer for bluegill. It's full of carp and even more so with bullheads. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull the rod out and then put the sonar out. Um, I'm going to talk about the bait I'm using today. It's corn, but I had a slight twist to it for our little Medipark expedition earlier in the video. You see, I wanted to stand out from the crowd since it was obviously crowded. And so I put garlic salt in canned corn mixed it together and made a little concoction. Two long shank hooks, the perfect hooks for bullhead fishing on four pound line spin cast rod. And then I think the eight, eighth of an ounce or a quarter of an ounce weight. And we're, we literally just sent it. That was nowhere near where I wanted to go, but it'll probably catch fish. All right, so now for the sonar. We'll keep an eye on that. Send it to the other side. Scoot every living thing out there. So we're at two feet, very close to shore. Gotta wait for that solid beep, the beep of a fish. There we go, fish right there. Yep. Oh, huge drop, huge drop right there. Oh, check that out. Oh, wait, y'all can't see that. And well, I found the fish. Holy cow! It dropped from two feet to seven feet. Oh. Okay, I'm moving this. I'm going with the fishy tar. I'm just gonna leave that out there and use that as a target. Cause that wind's gonna keep it in place. So. I still can't cast one of the dang, but it's on that ledge. Another thing I wanted to mention while the thing's going off is we got biscuit dough from yesterday that caught the only fish of Medipark. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Leave that hook point exposed. Oh yeah, my bad. Oh, there it is. Perfect cast. We're gonna keep an eye on that. Let's reel this back in. Didn't think we'd find that the first cast, but that explains why this spot is so protective in the winter time. I mean, that's textbook. Two to seven feet drop off. There are fish hanging right on the lip because we're on a warming trend, so they're gonna make their way shallow. I think I hit it. We're, we're about to find out. No, I have not heard again as much as it looks like it. Um, I'm just being a pansy and being overly cautious of my right ankle. Well, I'm planning on taking about a week off from running. I think I'm getting bit right now, if I'm not mistaken. So, swimming and biking have been the main goals this week. You can check out the Strava. Uh, it's going to be somewhere right here. And uh, you can see that I've been biking and swimming. And today I did a double, so I did both today. 
So halfway through the week, next week, we're going to be back for sure. Because this thing's healing up really quick. So, but again, being over the cautious, you saw as I was walking over here, if I didn't have my brace, I probably would have made a wrong move and uh, worse, you know, made it a lot worse. We don't want to get injured while trying to fish. So that's the ultimate goal. So especially when we're going after what we're going after today. Garlic corn gets the first hit of the day. Got him, I think. Yeah, I got him. This one's definitely a bullhead. First fish of the day. Oh yeah, he ate the top hook. That's not usually the case. Yeah, that's what that's what's in here. <laughs> and that's how you catch a wearing time bullhead, boys and girls. I don't know who all watches, but yeah, yeah, that's what you can expect this time of year, and especially from this body of water. But hey, a fish is a fish. So yeah, I'm down. See ya. I guess a big point I forgot to point out when doing this was anytime you, I don't care if you're going for bullhead, bass, trout, whatever. In the wintertime, location is key because they group up, or the warm water fish at least group up, and yeah, they're hard to find in the rest of the lake, but once you find a spot, usually you catch them. That's why I picked smaller, a, a really small body of water. I could be fishing the lake uh, over the hill, but that is way too big and way too deep. And that would take, I couldn't even cover that from shore with a sonar so coming to the overflow into a smaller body of water to where i can easily cast across with my sonar reel across get the beeping and find the fish obviously and once you find them they're usually grouped up pretty tight like in that case where on on the drop off and stuff you're looking for drop offs of course looking for signals and uh yeah <laughs> prove the point today it may be a small little bullhead but it proves the point Location is key in winter time. It's weird, I am pretty dang close to where I want to be, but I'm not getting bit. And the one I did catch was tiny as heck. My middle finger was longer than that fish. You know what they say about middle fingers? A big middle toe. And we have big middle toes. You got big thumbs. And you got a big brain. It's just scientifically proven. Oh, there's a hit. That's a good hit. That's a hit. Oh. Slack. Slacky poo. Got him. That feels a little bit better. Oh yeah, that feels a lot better. That's a carp! Yay! I'm all about carp. Let's go. This is no longer a bullhead video, guys. I'm sorry to clickbait your sucker self. Okay, like I said, this is basically a wintertime fishing how-to video. Oh, look at that little jump. Did y'all see that little jump? I like the effort. Alright, flip him here. Yes. 40 pound test, flipping fish. Hooked right in the bottom lip. That's exactly how you want it. And this fish is not that cold. So this water, despite being real deep in some parts, has warmed up really quick in the past few days. And there you go. That is a warm water fish for you in the wintertime. Alright, see ya. Yeah, there he goes. So confused why this is not getting demolished. I probably throw a crankbait in there and catch one. <laughs> probably that freaking stacked. And my corn is perfectly fine. It is simply the fish not willing to cooperate. By all accounts, it don't make sense. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. That's a good movie. That is a great movie. Go check it out, kids. We're calling it next time. Note the smell. Note the smell. Wow, English is hard. Next time, I'm bringing the lipless. To be fun to. Get a feel for the old bass and rod again. I'll take two fish. I'll be good enough. Don't get the gist, guys. You know, if anything, it's a point proven. You're not gonna always catch a bunch of fish in the winter. Catch a limit every time, but it works. Yeah, just keep that in mind, boys and girls and unicorns.